It's a beautiful spring morning here in Wardley and to celebrate the sun coming out for this first day of spring I'd like to teach you one of my favourite Feldenkrais lessons which is all about rolling. Today's Feldenkrais lesson is one of my absolute favourites and it's a great lesson to do, not just because you'll feel fantastic at the end of it and it's a lot of fun, um, but also because it can really help if you've got a bit of an achy back to help undo some of that tension. So begin please by lying down on your back and if you would like to just take a moment just to notice the overall contact that you make into the floor. Um, notice in particular how much of your back makes contact into the floor. For some people lying with their legs long can really cause them to extend or arch, arch in the back and um, that's, that's absolutely, absolutely fine but if it is the case just notice just notice that and then um, once you've spent a few moments just scanning your contact then please bring your legs to standing. Now I should say as ever that I'm doing the lesson in glasses, I need the glasses to be able to see the camera but if you're able to do the lesson um, without wearing glasses it's probably much better. You can see I'm lying on a, on a mat, um, a carpet is absolutely fine, just something to give you a little bit of um, cushioning. Uh, now that you've brought your legs to standing, you'll probably notice that the contact that your back that you make the contact that your back makes into the floor has changed a little. With my legs long, tend to be more lifted away from the mat. When I bring my legs to standing, then more of my back is able to sink into the into the floor. Um, and then once you've done that, please bring um, one leg and then the other. Into the, into the chest. So um, when you bring the legs into the chest it can be, if you've got any sort of Pilates training as part of your background or other exercise systems, um, what tends to happen is people um, want to turn it into a Pilates exercise where they're um, lifting the front of the legs up and sort of um, holding through the, the feet but if you can, this time, instead of, instead of contracting through the quadriceps and the front of the leg, just allow the lower leg to dangle. So not doing anything specifically with the foot, but just letting the lower leg relax so that the knee will flex. And then you bring the other, other leg in so that both lower legs are just complete, completely relaxed. Now, as I bring the legs in, bring the legs in, um, I'm not trying to bring the knee towards my, my head, I'm just sort of allowing a little bit of a rotation to take place so that the knee is sort of aimed more towards the armpit rather than to the middle of the, of the chest. And same with the, the other one. And then put the legs back down again. Um, it's important when you bring the legs in that you you try and bring the legs in as close close as possible close as possible to the chest you see the more the thighs are away from you what tends to happen is the lower back begins to arch and um, the weight of the legs is taking me more into a back bending action so if you can, bring the legs in close and you see my knees are about shoulder width apart and my toes, are, my feet are pointing more to, towards each other. So I'm not trying to keep everything in parallel. I'm just allowing the legs as they come in to take their natural space, space rather, rather like a, um, it would be when a, a baby would do this movement. And um, the re if you're able to bring the thighs in close, you can use your hands to help, you'll perhaps feel how the lower back 
comes closer down towards the floor. And that's something you want to try and encourage rather than staying, staying in an arch. So, um, once you've just explored that, just rest the feet back down. And then, once again, bring the legs in. You can do it one at a time to help you um, keep the back down. And then just notice as you bring, brought the legs in, have you shortened through the back of the neck? And if that is the case, could you perhaps just think of keeping the chin in slightly so you keep some length in the, in the back of the neck? And um, if you need a bit of support to help you do that, a pad or a piece of foam, then please take a bit of support. And then as you're here, you can see my elbows are resting down on the floor. That's not absolutely necessary, but if you can, have the elbows down. And my hands and fingers and thumbs together are just sort of cupping the top of the shin, the head of the shin here. And then see if you can begin. I'll show with my left knee first, just to take the left knee and the hand assist just a little bit further to the left and bring it back to its starting position. So you're just taking the knee a little bit to the left in the direction of the floor, but just a little bit to begin with. And, and the reason it's just a little bit is just so you can begin to explore how far can you take the leg, the leg before the pelvis wants to to roll, and you and if you're if you're very held in the hip joints, it might be a millimeter you can take the knee before the pelvis wants to get involved. But just see if you can stay with this small movement to begin with, of just taking the knee a little bit to the side, and then bringing it back to center. And as ever, just checking that you're not holding the breath, stiffening through the jaw, or um, or using the tongue, contracting through the tongue, tongue as you do this movement. Just want nice, easy breath. So I'm just taking the left knee a little bit to the side, and I'm just exploring how far can I take the knee before I sense the pelvis shifting a little bit to the left, the weight of the pelvis to the left. And then I come back. And as I do that, I'm keeping the my right knee fairly still. So I'm not trying to do anything with the right knee. Good. And then pause and put one foot down and then the other and take a rest. If you need more rests, or longer rests, then please don't hesitate to um, pause the recording. And then um, please, once you have rested, bring the legs back to sta standing. Try and bring the knees in towards you, and do one and then the other. And now this time, as you begin to take the left knee to the left, you can allow the knee to go a little bit further this time, and you'll perhaps sense how the pelvis becomes involved. Pelvis, the weight of the pelvis is rolling a little bit more to my left, and then I come back. And try, first of all, to keep your head looking towards the ceiling as you do this. So as the knee goes to the left, and keep the head to the centre, I let the knee go a little bit further, and then I think of coming back. Just allowing the knee to go a little bit further so I can feel how the right side of my pelvis is becoming light, more weight is coming to the left side, and then I'm coming back. And then you can begin to involve the head and eye. Say, so as the knee is going to the left, I'm looking with the head to the left, and then I come back. Just nice and gently taking the knee to the left, looking with the head and eyes, and now I can feel I'm going, um, more weight is coming into my left hand side, my right knee has begun to move, um, because my pelvis is moving, and then I can come back, just nice and gently. Good, and then come back, and then please take a rest.
And resting, you can roll the head a little bit left and right. Just nice and easy to see how that goes. And then please bring your legs back to standing. Bring, fold them back in towards your chest. And now begin to take the knee to the left, looking with the head and eyes. You can see how my legs come in closer to the floor and then I come back. Now, as you just practice these movements, this, the knee that you're directing to the floor, careful it doesn't go away from you, which would mean I'd be arching in the, in the back. So, as it's going to the floor, I'm just using my hand, soft hands, just to encourage the knee to stay more in the direction of my armpit, and then I come back. And as I come back, I'm really trying to pay attention to how my weight is slowly transferring onto the back, rather than, say, fall, falling onto my back. So I'm just gently taking my left leg over, looking with the head and eyes, and then to come back. Now, to come back here, I'm thinking now, I'm just using my right hand just to very gently encourage the right knee to in the direction of the right armpit to help as if I'm steering myself back. So from the back I allow my left knee to go more to the left, turn my head and eyes and come back. Once you get used to this it's really becomes become interesting to think ah, just by almost a flick of the eyes to the left you're beginning to direct the rolling and then you come back okay. pause and again just please take a, take a rest and then and once you have rested please bring the legs back to standing Bring them back in towards the chest, keeping them in, as I said before, close to you, close to the chest, rather than further away. And now, as you begin to take the left knee over, turning the head and eyes, begin to, if you can, allow yourself to come more onto the side. And as I come onto the side, then I can allow my right knee to join the left. So I'm on, on the side. Now, if you need to rest here, please rest, but if you're carrying on with the lesson, then you keep hold of the, of the top of the shin. And now, to come back onto my, onto my back, first of all, I think of lifting the right knee just a little bit to begin with, and then bringing it back onto the other one. So I'm just lifting the knee towards the ceiling, turning my head and eyes, and then come back. And what, what you try to do is let this, now the underneath knee, the left knee, linger on the, on the floor. So rather than sort of lifting both, I think just the right knee, as I'm lifting it towards the ceiling, I'm thinking of using my right hand just to encourage an arc of the knee more towards the right armpit and then I come back. And by letting this underneath the knee linger you get a, a very nice opening and release of the inner thigh muscles and you're just trying to find that place where if you were to go further the left knee would want to lift and then you, you come back from that place. So I'm just sort of, just kind of trying to discover for myself what's, where, how far can I take this knee, my right knee, before the left one wants to lift. And then I come back from there. And I'm just sort of exploring that moment or that place. That's it. And then the next time, I'm going to see if I can take this a bit further. So I they think of lifting the right knee, my hand directs it towards my armpit, my armpit, and then 
here, here's the moment where I can feel this left knee wanting to come with me. And I'm trying not to lift the left knee deliberately, but I'm letting it come because my weight and pelvis is now rolling onto my, onto my back. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so again, I'm going to go to the left hand, my left hand side. So here I am sort of in this baby position. I think of my left knee going to the left. My, I can feel my pelvis, my sacrum rolling to the left. Notice I'm not trying to bring the knees together or anything like this. Turn my head and eyes. I can feel more weight going into these ribs on the left hand side and then I make contact with my left arm, my left leg and then I allow the right knee to join the left. Okay. You can rest on the side if you need to. And then to come back, I think of keeping the left leg down, I begin to lift the right leg, aiming the knee in the direction of my armpit in an arc, the arm bends a little bit and then I find that moment when the left leg wants to come along and I come onto my back and then rest. One of the nice things about this lesson, um, these rolling lessons, I think, is that it really helps you to begin to become aware of tr the transference of weight, um, rather than using a muscular effort to to move your move yourself. And when you can um, focus in on that ability to transfer weight, it makes your can make your movement much more natural, much more e much easier because it means that you're beginning to rely upon your skeleton um, to, um, to move. Um, please bring your legs back to standing. Bring the legs back in. And then again, once more going to the left, so I think my left knee going to the left. Feel my sacrum with the weight rolling more into the left side of the back and this right leg I'm not deliberately sort of moving it with muscles I'm just sort of letting it linger linger and now see if you can reverse the movement to come back onto the back so you begin to go over to the left and then you think hmm I, maybe I don't want to come onto the left, I want to reverse this to come back so that you are really in control of how you're transferring your weight to the side and then coming back. You could, uh, Feldenkrais often said that the, the, one of the marks or the signs of good movement was the ability to reverse it at any stage And then pause and please rest. I need to get some new t-shirts because these keep on coming out. <laughs> so once you've rested, please bring the legs back to standing. And now let's um, just explore that to the other, other side. So it'll mean I'm showing my back more towards the camera. But first of all, with your legs in close towards you, um, knees about shoulder width apart. See if you can begin to move your right knee a little bit to the right and back to centre. And you'll you'll notice that as the as the knee goes a little bit further, how the weight shifts into the right hand side of the sacrum, the pelvis, and come back. You can begin to turn the head and eyes and coming back. That's it. Just making sure that you're not holding the breath, not shortening through the back of the neck. Um, just a nice, easy breathing. 
And as you begin to get used to this movement, this gentle rolling, rolling, you can begin to think of coming more onto the side, letting the, now the left leg linger, and then coming back. Just to explore taking the weight or transferring the weight to the right and back. And then once more, taking the weight over. Now this time, I'll come all the way onto my right hand side. And then to come back, I think of lifting my right knee, uh, my left knee, sorry. Now you can probably see from this angle, um, with my back more towards you, what I meant about the knee. So I'm not just lifting it, taking it straight up towards the ceiling. I'm thinking of it coming in an arc towards my left shoulder, left shoulder, I let my right leg linger and then I come onto the back. And again, just nice and slowly, feel how you can transfer weight, weight to one side. And you can be, do this as slowly as you like and then come back. And then once you've got the hang of this, then of course you can begin to go all the way to one side. And then all the way to the other side. Just exploring this rolling, rolling from side to side. And once you've got the hang of the movement, then if you wanted to, you could make it quicker. But not so quick that you begin to you lose the organisation or the quality of the movement. Why be in a hurry? <laughs> it's such a nice thing to do. Why rush, rush it? But, uh, Now, when you, next time you come onto your back, please just take a rest if you, uh, if you need to. So I, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed that, this lesson. It's a slightly shorter lesson than some of the longer lessons I've been teaching. The classical version of the lesson goes on to use the rolling into other sequences, which we can explore uh, another time. But I just wanted to introduce this basic, um, basic lesson and in the next lesson I'm going to show you how to use one of these amazing balls to really help improve your rolling and your core strength and we're going to be using the ball in the next lesson um, to help help improve what we've learned learned today Thank you for joining me. If you like the lesson, please hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, then please hit the subscribe button.